Welcome back. Today we're making this cute sloth. But first I just want to point out that we are using yarn for this project. When working on a project that uses several colors, it's actually a lot more inexpensive to use yarn. The only trick with it is, is you have to use yarn that is half the diameter of your rope. I'll leave a link in the description box of where I got mine. Okay, so let's get started. On a six inch wooden dowel, we're gonna attach all of our 11 cords using a lark's head knot. To make a lark's head knot, find the center of your cord by folding it in half, then take the loop end and place it behind your wooden dowel. Next, thread your long tail ends through that loop. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the rest of the cords. Okay, so to read our pattern here, we're gonna start at the very top left and we're gonna work our way all the way across to the right hand side. Each square on the grid represents a vertical double half hitch knot. Working with a really long length of yarn, we're gonna place it behind our first cord here. To tie our first vertical double half hitch knot, you wanna make a loop on your right, wrap your tail end around and through the loop. This is only half of our knot. To complete it, we need to repeat the same thing again and make a loop on your right, wrap your tail end around and through the loop. Cinch your knot, but don't pull it too tight, then slide it all the way up to the top. Your first knot always looks a little different than the rest of them, so I'm gonna demonstrate your next knot. Make sure your yarn is placed behind your next cord and make a loop on your right, wrap your tail ends around and through. Then repeat one more time. A loop on your right, around and through. Continue all the way across and I'll meet you at the end of this row. For pixel macrame patterns, you wanna start at the far left and work your way to the right, and then you wanna go back in the opposite direction. To do this, you wanna grab the same long strand of yarn that you were working with before, then place it behind the very last cord of the row. Make a loop on your left this time, wrap your cord around and through the loop, and then repeat one more time. Essentially, we're working from right to left this time, and the best way to remember is that your cord and your loop will always be on the same side of the direction that you're going. I have skipped ahead a little bit and I completed the first two rows and now on the third row, we need to switch the color. Sometimes what I like to do is count out how many cords I need in the different color and then I flip the next cord up. Marking it like this is an easy way to help keep track. Okay, so leave your white filler cord down and we're gonna grab the next color. To attach it, we're gonna do the same thing we did at the very start of this project. Also, if you ever run out of yarn, this is the exact same way we're gonna attach another piece. The reason why I don't give specific lengths for our working cord here is because vertical double half hitch knots eat up quite a lot of length. But what I can tell you is, I like to work with 120 inches at one time. I have completed all of the medium brown color in this row. Now we need to switch back to white. Lay down your brown cord just like so. Then pick up the previous white cord that you were working with. And we're gonna run it underneath all of our filler cords. So just place it behind the back and carry it all the way over to the right hand side. Make sure it's also on top of your brown working cord. Then grab your next filler cord and place your white yarn behind that. Then just carry on tying your vertical double half hitch knots. And don't forget, we're working in a zigzag pattern all the way straight down to the bottom of our grid. Alright, so to finish off our pattern, we're going to unpin it from our board and flip it over. And don't worry, it should look messy on the back. To clean this up, we're going to grab any two strands that are close together, and we're going to secure it by tying a double overhand knot. And trim off the excess yarn. To make cleanup a lot easier, we're going to use masking tape and we're gonna trim along this line to even out our fringe. 
If you do a lot of macrame pixel patterns, this is such a great tip. If you happen to be eyeballing these awesome fern leaves, I'll leave the link to that tutorial on the screen now and I'll see you over there.